citizens representing free speech rights spoke out at the Humboldt County Board of Supervisors afternoon session today. County Administrative Officer Philip Smith Haynes gave a brief staff report concerning a permanent ordinance regulating free speech rights in front of the courthouse. Back in January, Mr. Smith Haynes was directed by the board to speak with various stakeholders about the development of an ordinance concerning the appropriate uses of county property. The chief administrative officer had promised to return with a full report by the end of May, but he asked for more time to speak with the Human Rights Commission and the Occupy Eureka group itself. I believe that I will be ready to have a, a report to the board um, on a potential ordinance um, uh, on June 19th. So that is the, the schedule I am shooting for at this point, and I would be um, open to any questions from the board. Although no action was taken and the CAO's comments were brief, Concerned citizens spoke during public comment for nearly an hour about the proposed ordinance and the urgency ordinance already in effect. James Decker wanted to state for the record that the CAO was not listening to the voices of the members of his group, Occupy Eureka. I'm a little disappointed that the, uh, Mr. Smith Haynes chose not to fill you all in on what the response was from people at these meetings. Uh, it is overwhelmingly against any ordinance, any permitting process, uh, any of these restrictions that you try to impose. He wanted the county reps to know that the unauthorized encampment was occurring 24-7 and that sleeping and food sharing were still taking place. Your policy of disappear, go to jail or die will be a failure in the end. We do not fear your jail because you are already stealing our liberty. One occupier used the power of silence to illustrate his point. Occupier Dane asked for a written permit to speak and then stood at the podium with sealed lips for three minutes. He claimed he needed a written permit to speak his mind. Thank you. Janelle Egger made the point that when the urgency ordinance was being passed, more people were against it than for it. There was 140, 139 complaints. The day that you passed this, you were given a petition with 240 signatures. So you've got 130 complaints, 240 people say, don't do it. So I, I think. I think you rushed through this without really thinking, unfortunately. According to Verbena, none of the traditional users of the front of the courthouse are in favor of a new ordinance regulating free speech. She thinks they should rescind the urgency ordinance. You all don't listen, but as I heard somebody else say, for the benefit of the public, people should know that nobody that Mr. Smith Haynes is meeting with wants an ordinance. And what I heard was that and what I agree with is that you all need to repeal the first one, the fake emergency ordinance. Food is for sharing. Okay, I started sharing my food sharing career at Woodstock in 1969. And I learned then that food sharing is the basis of a civilized society. When we live in a county where food sharing is disallowed by the people who run the county, then I know we are in big trouble. Once public comment concluded, only one supervisor had a response to make in regards to the various statements made by the audience. Mark Loveless wanted to clarify that if the people the CAO spoke with were against an ordinance, he had to tell the board that. And some of the input that he brings, you know, it's appropriate for him to bring back input that the groups he met with did not want to see any ordinance. That is appropriate. But if the groups want to be a part of helping to determine what might be appropriate, if there, if there is such thing, if you believe there is such thing as some reasonable restrictions or uh, way to implement this, you know, that would be appropriate input. But it's also appropriate input if your position is that there is none. This response wasn't sufficient for the group. May I make a comment? 
I know you closed comments, but he made a comment. Actually, like no, but but you certainly can email us or meet us after that. We don't. Say it. Um, the state, that's what it makes your mind. We already have. Yeah. They're all cowards. Okay, wait. Every last one of our sweeter cares right. You know, we're going to take a short break and while people leave the room so we don't have disruption during the meeting. So we'll be back in five minutes. Chairwoman Virginia Bass took a five minute break in reaction to this woman's comments outside of protocol. She wanted to respond to Loveless even though public comment had been closed. But after the live telecast cut to black and the meeting took a five minute break, Loveless descended to the level of the people and allowed this woman to give him a piece of her mind. We need real people talking about real things. Not just, let's do this ordinance and forget everybody that's going, what about us? What about us? That's the whole movement. What about us? Not just the people who can write a check and take care of everything. Laura felt like the government and the people of the movement were simply talking at each other, but there was no dialogue. This year is the necessary evil of public input, of public process. This is the absolute worst way in the world for us to hear from people, but it's required that we have a venue where everyone gets an equal shot, and that's it. It's very formal, and it does not support good dialogue. Laura thought that the county should create an initiative and let the people decide, instead of drafting an ordinance with merely their input. I, I think I would respect it more if it went to the general population, something like this, because it affects each and every one of us. Loveless acknowledged the idea and the input and said the CAO should use it in his report. County Administrative Officer Philip Smith Haynes will bring back more information about this ordinance early next month. For Planet Humble, this has been Gabrielle Fellows reporting.